Hi, Nazim. More essays. Good work. Let's take a look right away at what you've written. This is the one about changing jobs or staying in the same job. So let's see what you said. Holding one position um, until retirement or changing a career more than once in a lifetime. Lifetime is usually one word is a highly controversial issue in today's world. Both of the ideas have their own followers who fiercely debate over the issue for a continuous period of time. The supporters of changes in a career path argue that job job movements, I think. Yeah, not S here. Are beneficial for a specialist as it raises opportunities to master new skills. And personally, I strongly advocate job changing. Okay, no S. This essay will discuss job changing again, no S. Using examples from the Osaka University and J.P. Morgan to demonstrate points and prove arguments. All right, now the reason why I keep telling you to remove the S is that the word job here is acting as an adjective. It is a noun, but it's an, it's, you're using it as an adjective to describe what kind of movement. What kind of movement? Job movement. And so we never put an S on our adjectives in English, okay? They're always singular. This, this is why. Okay, so moving on. On the one hand, there is ample evidence that sticking to one position throughout the course of... Uh, Mm, something about this is just strange. That's why I'm stopping. Uh, throughout the course of uh, the entire working life. Hmm. Let me read it from the beginning. On the one hand, there is ample evidence that sticking to one position throughout the, in the... That's what it is. Throughout the entire working life fringes as stability and work predictability. I don't know... Well, I don't know what you mean here by fringe. Did you mean fringe? Did you mean fringes? Uh, let's see, that sticking position, da, 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 fringe, I don't know what that means. I don't know if you mean it as a verb, I don't know if you mean it as a noun. I'm confused. In either case, it doesn't really fit here. So you need to uh, structure the sentence um, more correctly. However, both of these positives uh, turn out to be negatives as they prevent a professional from developing new skills and from taking on responsibilities for other fields of work. For example, recent research performed by the Osaka University indicated that 58% of specialists who are reluctant to develop their professional skills actually try to avoid staying on course of new things happening in their fields. This study also showed that these people decrease chances of earning decent amounts of money in 10 years. Hence, it is obvious that staying in one position for a lifetime... I don't know why you have approach here. Again, just take it out. ...does not prove itself to be profitable in the long run. Okay, fine. On the other hand, many people say that changing jobs and even industries can bring enormous benefits to specialists. This is largely because not only uh, do, not only do people manage, ah, or you could say this is largely because people not only manage to properly face challenges of shift, I don't know what you mean here, of change, maybe, mm, maybe a better word, but also they learn to take successful actions in the new positions. Job seekers with completely different backgrounds and experiences carve out niches in highly competitive sectors throughout the developed countries by mastering proper skills. For example, a recent report issued by J.P. Morgan indicates that around 75% of investment banking specialists are former STEM professionals who spent up to three years working in technical industries and then moved to finance. Needless to say, that mm, I wouldn't say that here. So, needless to say, perks and benefits these professionals enjoy are much higher, no more, uh, no comma, than what they would have earned, or would have earned if they, uh, if they would have preferred to hold their technical jobs. Okay, the development is fine, but you can see that I struggled with some of the grammar here. There were like extra words where you didn't need them, or there were words missing where you needed those. Okay, so from the arguments and examples given above, I strongly believe that although the longer people hold their positions, the more work predictability they enjoy, job shifting, no the here, is far more beneficial. It is worth noting that the change of positions will become more important in the future as, job mar as the job market will require employees to have uh, a mixture of backgrounds from various industries. All right, so you've developed it really nicely. I liked it. Um... Although, you know, as I've said before, there were some areas that created some confusion. Um, so do be aware of them and make sure you correct them. All right, let's look at English and homestay. All right, great. D 
Dear Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I want to thank you for providing me with accommodation, no Anne, in Manchester during my visit to the UK under the, here, English and Homestay program at the beginning of September. Please kindly let me introduce myself. My name is Nazim. I'm 37 years old. Uh, a, here A, happy wife and mother of three kids. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, my feeling about this letter is that it is a formal letter. You don't know these people. So, and you've already referred to them by their uh, last name, their surname. Um, so what that means is that you need to use formal language. What does that mean for you practically? That means that I would rather not see words like want, but instead you should use words like would like. So this should say, I would like to thank you. This was nice and formal. Please kindly let me introduce myself. But then you have this word kids here, which is also informal. Instead, it should be children. All right, let's move on. Since it will be my very first visit to the UK, could you please be so kind as to tell me what kind of warm clothing I have to bring with me? Fine. Since I have an allergy, I have to carry medical drops with me all the time. I will be extremely grateful if you give me any suggestion on whether air companies prohibit taking such type of medicine on board or not. You didn't need a, um, you didn't need a question mark here. The way you phrased it is, um, it's an indirect question. It's an in yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, it's an indirect question, so you don't need a a question mark. Just a full stop would have been fine. I also wonder if I can ask you for your valuable advice on whether I have to take a bus or a train, you don't need a comma here, or a train from the airport to reach your house. Um, you also don't need a, a question mark there because the work of the question mark has been done by this word here. I wonder if, okay? That's basically doing the job of your question mark and the rest of it is actually a statement. So this needs to be a full stop as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. My flight is scheduled to arrive in Manchester on September 1 at 10 30 AM. Um, may I ask for your telephone numbers in case I get lost? Looking forward to seeing you. Please put a full stop here and then also leave a line here as well. Kind regards, Nazim. Okay, um, this is fine. I, I can see that you're trying to be uh, formal, almost kind of neutral. If you wanted to be a little more formal, I would have liked you to write the whole sentence out. I am looking forward to seeing you, full stop, okay? The rest of it is fine. I already told you a couple of little things with your punctuation and so forth that you needed to change. Uh, generally speaking, it was lovely. You had a nice tone overall. I liked it. Your questions were good. So no problems at all. Just some little, little things that I want you to work on in terms of punctuation and so forth. Okay. Um, let's see. So good work with these. I understand that you have some more essays with us. So I'll be here waiting to see what you write for us next. Uh, good luck with them. And, uh, that's the end of this correction. So thanks a lot.